Hi, I'm Karen, and today I will speak to you about the pharmaceutical drug tamoxifen. And more specifically, I will talk about it in regards to its mechanism of action, pathway that it interferes, and side effects. And at the end, I will ask a question related to this presentation. So to begin, uh, once tamoxifen has been taken by mouth or injected, it is processed and delivered by uh, hepatic enzymes to be converted into its active metabolites. Uh, conversion of tamoxifen to its active metabolites enhances the binding affinity to estrogen receptor. And before I go into detail about that, I'll give you a little background about agonists and antagonists to avoid confusion. Antagonists are basically ligands that bind to the receptor that causes no downstream signaling, whereas agonists are ligands that binds to the receptor and induces an effect. You'll see that tamoxifen is considered an estrogen receptor antagonist, and while the medication itself inhibits estrogen responsive genes in breast tissue, it can have an agonistic effect elsewhere. So moving on, uh, in pathways, uh, ligands that bind to estrogen receptor like estrogen, estradiol, estriol, estrone, uh, these hormones are able to diffuse into the cell and make its way into the nucleus and bind to the receptor given their chemical nature. Um, in women, normal breast tissue is highly sensitive to estrogen. Therefore, uh, proliferation is induced more so during puberty and pregnancy. Um, however, a preponderance of breast cancers um, comprises estrogen-dependent signaling pathways um, in the initiation, progression, and metastasis of the cancer. And an increased proliferation uh, can mean that it can increase the risk of replication errors that can result in a mutation. It is also thought that while estrogen is being metabolized, it can render genotoxic byproducts that can possibly damage DNA this way and result in mutations as well. Drugs like tamoxifen were developed to target estrogen binding in the estrogen receptor and interfere with estrogen synthesis. So while tamoxifen has some desirable side effects like preventing bone loss by inhibiting uh, osteoclast activity. Others may be quite undesirable, like an increased risk of deep vein thrombosis, pulmonary embolisms, fatty liver, and reduced cognition, to name some. But the most concerning of all of them is the fact that it can cause endometrial cancer. And as I pointed out earlier, that while tamoxifen is an antagonist in breast tissue, it can act as an agonist somewhere else. And tamoxifen in the uterus acts as an agonist. Agonists, as we recall, are able to bind to the receptor and induce an effect. So, in a paper published last year, it showed that in the uterus, tamoxifen stimulates phosphorylation at serine 40 on transcription factor NRF2. And it stimulates nuclear translocation by activating protein kinase C delta. And estrogen activates protein kinase C delta and prevents ubiquination of mutated KRAS protein. KRAS protein is basically an on and off switch that controls cell proliferation. Preventing ubiquination of a mutated KRAS isn't necessarily a good thing if either estrogen or tamoxifen is present. So in activating protein kinase delta, it activates transcription factor NRF2, leading up to the transcription of the sequestosome 1 gene that will give the sequestosome 1 protein. And in breast, lung, and pancreatic cancer, uh, sequestosome 1 expression has been shown to be increased. And acknowledging the following information, uh, one would think that developing an inhibitor of sequestosome 1 would be advantageous, but it's not. And my question to you is, how come? What will be the result in inhibiting this? Um, and that marks the end of my presentation. I look forward to your response. Bye.